Today we're going to start by talking about conditional probability. And probably the best way to introduce it is just with an example. Um, I think it makes more sense if you, if you see it in context. So let's take a look at this example where we've got 100 students, right? Uh, 40 are taking anatomy and 30 are taking biochemistry, 20 are taking both. Now this looks like a familiar problem, right? This, is, this looks like it's probably a, a Venn diagram problem. Um, it says if a student is chosen at random, um, sorry, if a student chosen at random is taking anatomy, what is the probability that he or she is also taking biochemistry? Okay, so this is a little bit different from what we um, have than the uh, questions that we've been asked in the past. We're at, we're, we are told that the student chosen is taking anatomy. Okay, so that's a given. We know that. Okay, and then we want to know the probability that they're also taking biochemistry given that they are taking anatomy. Okay, so the way that we write that is the probability of B, I'm going to say B is the event where they're taking biochemistry, um, given A, right, where A is the event that the student is taking anatomy. Okay, so we read this as the probability of probability probability of B given given A. Okay. So you might recognize that vertical line. We we said um, in chapter six that that meant such that or given that. All right. So in here it, it basically means the same thing. Probability of B given that event A happens. Okay, the probability that event B happens given that event A happens. Okay, so that's the way we read it. But let's solve this problem and reason it out. All right, so let's go ahead and make this into a Venn diagram because it seems like it's just begging to be put in the Venn diagram. Okay, so I'm going to call um, event A, like I said, is the event that a student is taking anatomy. And then event B is the event that a student is taking biochemistry. All right, now we know some are taking both, so they overlap. And then we'll put a rectangle around it to represent the set of all of the students in our group. All right, now we know there are 100 students in this group. It says that 40 are taking anatomy. And it says that 30 are taking biochemistry and 20 are taking both, okay? So now we've got our Venn diagram and we can, we can fill in some more numbers, right? So now we know, for example, that um, 20 have to be taking anatomy and not biochemistry, right? Because the, everything in the circle, the A circle, has to add up to 40. Uh, we know that there have to be 10 students that are taking biochemistry and not anatomy, right? Because the, everything inside the biochemistry circle has to add up to 30. And you can also see that, okay, if we add up um, all of the numbers in the sets A and B, right, the, which would be the people who are taking either anatomy or biochemistry or both, right, we get 50, and we had 100 students, so then 50 students have to be taking neither biochemistry nor uh, anatomy, okay? So now we've set up our Venn diagram, but let's think about what the problem is actually asking. The probability is asking, what is the, or sorry, the problem is asking, what is the probability um, of B given that A is true, all right? So let's think about what that means. So we know that A is true. So we aren't concerned about the whole set of 100 students. We are only now restricted to the set of students who are taking anatomy, okay? That is our, the, our, um, our sample space now. Essentially, we're restricting the sample space because now we're given some information. We're given that the student we chose is taking anatomy. And given that, now, what's the probability that they're also taking biochemistry, okay? Well, we know the, the number of people, the number of people that are uh, taking anatomy and biochemistry, we know that that is equal to 20, right? That's the intersection. 
And now we're going to divide. Instead of by the, dividing the, by the whole 100, we're going to divide by the number of students that are just taking anatomy because we were given. We were given that they are taking anatomy, all right? So we don't need to consider the whole big uh, group of 100 students. Our sample space has now been restricted to just those 40 that are taking anatomy, all right? And we know that that number is 40. So the probability that um, a student who's taking anatomy, given that they're taking anatomy, they're also taking biochemistry is just one half, or you could write it as 0 0.5, or we could write it as 50%. 50%. All right? So um, take a look at the next problem. It's very similar to this. Um, give it a try on your own, and I'll meet you in the next video.